Welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Give me a hand wave if you see me. Awesome. And see the group. Uh, please share where you're calling from and what inspired you to join this session. Okay, Edna calling from North Carolina. What part of North Carolina? I'm in Charlotte. So I'd love to know where you're calling from. Or where you're coming in from. Hi from Atlanta. So you're like our nearby neighbor. Scotland, all the way from Scotland. Greensboro. And Philly's in the house. Chicago. Cleveland, Austin. Ro Rochester, New York. Oh, we got everyone from everyone. Salt Lake City. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. We'll get started in about a few minutes. Lebanon, Tennessee, Memphis, Tennessee. This is good. This is good. I know we're going to have some good, good energy here. And I'll be also curious to know what made you decide to join this session. So where are you calling from and what made you to decide to join this session today? Thank you, Denise. I need tips to survive gaslighting, right? We go through the gaslighting. <laughs> hey, burnout. Burnout is a real thing, especially with us going through this pandemic. Oh, Pamela. Hi. I'm responsible for employee de development for my ERG. Okay, so we want to understand how we can um, help with that. Helping others in our organization, how to lift yourself back up when the world pushes you down. Look, we, we're, we know that we need to be resilient. All right, so I know it's early, early um, for some of us, we may be it may be what six in the morning if we're on the West Coast. Some of us on the East Coast maybe get a, you know a little extra sleep. So I want us to, um, if you feel comfortable to do so, to turn on your cameras. Um, and I know some of us may have business on the top, but party on the bottom, maybe some shorts or anything like that. Feel you're you're totally fine. But I like for us to get out of our chairs, bring some energy to our bodies, bring some energy to our bodies. Okay. So what we're gonna do here, let me actually turn the music down because I'm gonna ask you to do it. Some assignment is to take yourself off of mute. Take yourself off of mute. Okay, and I know this, I, we might be doing some risky stuff here. All right, so I know usually at Summit, we're in a big space, we're walking around, we're, we're high-fiving our friends. So we're gonna actually try to mimic that right now. So well, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna throw three statements at you. And all I want you to say is, oh yeah. If you if you agree with those statements, say, oh yeah, okay? All right, so here goes the first statement. If you are ready to have a life-changing experience, say, oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Okay, okay, okay. If you're ready to take some of these skills, maybe, you know, for yourself, maybe share it with your coworkers or your family members, say, oh yeah, come on, give it to me. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> if you're looking to just change your life, you want to bounce back, or not even bounce back, but bounce forward. Say, oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Have a good time. So give somebody a high five or an elbow. I know we're like kind of social distancing. Denise is pushing up the roof. OK, we're going to have a good old time. We're going to have a good old time. So let's go ahead and jump into it, group. All right. And just give me, all right, just want to make sure I'm sharing my screen here. Give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen. It says Power of Resilience. Awesome. Power of Resilience, building stronger LGBTQ professionals, high performers like yourself, so you can take some of this knowledge and wisdom back to your teams. I want to introduce myself. My name is Kalila Josephs, but feel free to call me Coach K. I go by the pronouns they, she. I identify as a Black queer woman uh, with a little bit of Latinx in there. Um, the work that I do is around life and performance coaching. So I'm really, really big on um, energy management and helping individuals like yourself. How do you build a sense of resilience? I'm also um, a LGBTQ plus religious trauma survivor and advocate, helping those that have been traumatized in such a way experience spiritual freedom. And I'm current, a current grad student. 
grad student from marriage family therapy um, with a specialization in LGBTQ studies. And I think we've kind of gotten to know ourselves a little bit here. I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina, and that is my baby, Kobe. He's locked up because I told him <laughs> mama got a big presentation today. So please, I don't need you running around. All right, so we're going to jump into it. I want to thank you. Thank you um, for just not only selecting this session, but showing up, you know, to, to the whole entire out and equal, you know, is a busy week and we're, we're getting all this knowledge that we want to take back to our workplaces. So thank you for investing your time and your energy. Um, also a special thank, thank you to Aaron and the whole L&D team. Um, Alanisha's on here um, helping. So just want a special thank you. So give yourself a round of applause. Sometimes I don't think we do that quite often. And um, we are here for resilience, right? So we wanna talk about this topic, but to make the most of our time, I have a couple of guidelines for engagement. Okay, one, let's be present. We know some of us may be still kind of in our workspaces, maybe catching some of these sessions in between work. Um, we have our mobile devices, but if we could put those mobile devices, you know, to the side and really tap in and engage in, I promise you this, this experience is gonna be well, worth your time. Let's co-create a brave space. So what we're gonna to try to do is have a breakout room where we add, we're gonna give, give a little bit of a question so we can have some self-reflection and to lean in. So if you've heard of safe space, we want to actually have a brave space and have some brave conversations. And I, I, you're probably already feeling this when we went to a lot of the sessions, we only get one hour. So we're probably getting, you know, learning a lot of stuff, but I want you to just take one thing. If you're able to just take one thing out of this entire experience, that is going to be good, okay? All right, so let's actually do, we're gonna do a little bit of a word cloud. If you were to break down resilience into one word, what is that one word? What does resilience mean to you? What is that one word? For me, it's strong. And I'm gonna put the link in the chat for those of us that are um, not gonna be able to do the word cloud. the QR code. So link is in the chat as well. And I'm going to share that in about 20 seconds or so. Okay. All right. Looks like we've got some good stuff coming in. So I'm going to switch from the QR code to what we have as our word cloud. Okay, some of the things we're seeing is, wow, courage, determination, strength, grit, survival, um, ownership, tested, unbreakable, brave, perseverance, anti-fragile, okay? We have a lot, we, we have a, a good sentiment as to what does resilience mean to us? And what we'll find, resilience is one of those, how can I say this, one of those, um, words that you can't really express it in language too much. It's just an experience that you have to have. And as we go through this process and talking about this content, you kind of get an understanding as to what is the art and what is the science of resilience. So actually team, I'm going to save this because this is work that we've done together, right? I'm going to save this and I'm going to put it um, in the files after the session so that you can actually put it up at your computer desk and say, this is what we produced at Out and Equal, this is what resilience means to me, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and jump back into it. So what are our intentions? So you all mentioned strength, endurance, um, challenge, these concepts or these words of resilience. And when we think about our community, LGBTQ community in the, the spectrum of, of which, we, which we are is the impacts of stress. So earlier, some people mentioned burnout, survival. We want to understand when we experience stress, how is that impacting us personally and professionally? Two, we want to learn how to transform stress as a catalyst for growth. And when we hear the word stress, put it in the chat. When you hear the word stress, what comes up for you? I know from before I, before I started to actually teach this, is I was like, oh, I don't want no part of, uh, no part of no stress. Anxiety, a, a lot of that anxiety, um, sickness, um, exhaustion, failure, that's what we think about with stress, but how can we shift the narrative on stress? And then um, lastly, I wanna leave you with some holistic strategies, okay? Some holistic strategies that's gonna actually help you build a sense of resilience. 
Now, if we were to actually say, okay, hey, we're gonna formulate the definition, resilience is the ability to withstand adversity and bounce back from challenging life events. The ability to withstand adversity. Only you, maybe those around you, know what type of challenges that you have experienced and how do you bounce back from that? But I like to entertain that you don't really bounce back. I will counter that. You don't really bounce back. You're, you're a different person. You're a different breed after you go through some stressors and some challenging situations. I just want to kind of give us some stats here around how um, stress impacts our um, community. When it comes down to workplace inequality, and we're thinking of you know, our BIPOC people of color, things like unnecessary background checks, <laughs> you know, discri discriminatory laws and policies that we have in place um, that need to be updated. Lack of mentorship, lack of visibility. So we see a lot of the times at the, at the bottom level of our, of our companies or our organizations, we may have a lot of people of color, but as soon as we start to move up the ladder, it starts to kind of dissipate a little bit. Why is that? Right. So workplace inequality, um, our mental health and our well-being. A lot of you mentioned this already. So anxiety, the depression, um, we're starting to see, especially during the pandemic, a lot of people, you know, turning to substance use, substance abuse, suicidal ideation because of, okay, I, I can't deal with not only the situation with my identity at times, the life stressors that I may be experiencing. When it comes down to hate crimes, um, one out of five lesbian, um, you know, one out of five LGBTQ in the community will experience some type of trauma, some type of hate crime. Specifically, when we get to our transgender community, one out of four. And um, earlier this week, I facilitated a, a, our diverse, a diverse fellowship session and brought some stats there around how it impacts our Black trans women community. Now, it says within our Black trans women community, they are murdered seven times higher than the general population. Okay, so that's a stressor when you have to show up for work, show up for a Zoom call, but not quite sure how am I going to survive after the workplace or me navigating in the world. And I know that this particular session, this summer, there were a lot of the topics we talked about is things to take back to our workplace, but we also have to think about the future generation you know, our LGBTQ youth, for those of us that have children that are coming out or that we may be caregivers or mentors to, when they're rejected from their families, they're eight times as likely to try to attempt or commit suicide. So it's not only the stress on us, but it's a stress on everyone. And we got to make it, we got to learn how to manage and how do we, you know, look at the perspective of stress. So I wanna invite you to three ideas worth knowing. Okay, so I'm gonna give you three big ideas. I hope that you would come with your notebook and pen so we could take down some, some notes. Um, so this is gonna be good for you. Um, the first, first, first idea worth knowing, the only constant in life is change. The only constant in life is change. Have you heard that before? Okay, I, I see a lot of head nods. Yes, change is always going to happen. We see, we see it in our, we see it in our organizations. The re or growth transformation. You know, certain business areas are being outsourced. We're having updated and policies and changes. So we're going to have change, and then we have changes in our workplace. But then we also have changes in our personal life. Okay, don't I would say within the last 18, 18 to nineteen months, have you gone through change? <laughs> Give me, okay, we have gone through change. So it's not just only Coach K going through change. Mike, Eduardo, Gilly, we are going through some change. Now, when we think about our resilient journey and the way to freedom, okay, and freedom in your, your queerness, free, freedom in your life, moment to moment, day to day, season to season, whatever that looks like for you, there are things that we have experienced as a collective and as an individual that causes stressors or challenges on us. Like, so we mentioned earlier, like the systemic, you know, systemic racism, the systemic oppression that we see and experience with people of color. And, and is now being illuminated in our world where we say, no mas, we, we, we we're, not, we're not standing for that. We have to make some type of change. We have to make some type of change. 
Um, fear, shame, and guilt. How many of us, either with our identity or our life stressors, have gone through a sense of fear, shame, and guilt that causes a lot of, a lot of stress? I know personally for myself that does. Healthcare, our healthcare laws within our organizations and then also our you know, federal and legis legislative laws that prohibits certain individuals, transgender community to fully being who they are. That causes a form of stress. Living out, you know, don't ask, don't tell. So even though it may not necessarily be in place, but sometimes we could still feel a sentiment of, I'm not gonna ask, <laughs> you don't need to tell me what's going on. Um, so we experience like even code switching. So for those of us in the minority communities, when we have to show up into the workplace and we're on a Zoom call or in our team meetings and we feel like, okay, I'm the only, you know, I'm, I'm the only minority, whatever that looks like. I may be the only person with a um, person with a disability or what I like to say, unique ability. Um, we may have those experiences. And then even with COVID-19 has highlighted many of that, you know, much of that for us. So, you know, that's why we're here. We're trying to get a better understanding. These are some high level macro stuff, but I wanna bring it down to an individual of what type of stresses that we experience. And I wanna share um, a little bit of, you know, my own resilient journey. And that started for me back in 2009. Now we know what happened in 2009. <laughs> we weren't in a, you know, pandemic, but we were in a recession. And during that time, you know, got out of college, got my degree in hand. Yes, I'm going into corporate America. I'm ready to go. And I had a hard time. I couldn't find a job anywhere. Probably couldn't even find a job at a, at a, at a McDonald's um, to the point where I had to move to South Carolina with my sister and, you know, help her at her daycare. I was also working uh, at a hotel as a, as a night auditor. And I said to myself, hey, I did not go to school to change diapers or fold towels. I need to find me a job. I need to do something. I was sharing this with someone and they said, you know, you got a couple things working against you. One, you're gonna have a hard time finding a job with a degree from an HBCU, a historically black college. Two, you're gay. <laughs> you're gonna need to do something. You're gonna need to put on a skirt, some makeup, some heels or something. And if you, at least if you wanna get the job and get past the interview. So I took heed a little bit to the advice, but I knew some parts didn't resonate for me. I knew I had to make a little bit of a change or a difference. For me, that was, hey, I'm gonna print all my resumes. I'm gonna drive up an hour and a half from where I'm at and knock on every company door. Um, I, and I got a job of, you know, recruiter said, hey, we don't usually have people doing that. So usually I, I yeah, got, into the, got into the corporate environment, but I was feeling a sense of, I don't feel comfortable. When I would sit down and um, talk to my manager, she would say, you know, hey, you have so much potential, but it seems like something is holding you back. What is that? What is that? I'll have my colleague who say, girl, you look uncomfortable. I don't know what's going on, but you look uncomfortable. What it was, the uncomfortability is that I couldn't be myself. I was wearing clothes that did not express who I was. I just wanted to retreat. I didn't want to be seen. I didn't want to be noticed. I didn't raise my voice or speak out in my team meetings. And it wasn't until I said, you know what, this is who I am. This is my gender expression. This is how I'm going to have to show up in the workplace, regardless of any, if anybody's gonna, you know, accept me because I have a bow tie or male clothing on, this is who I am. And it wasn't until when I made that shift that opportunities opened up for me. Now, some people may say, really a, a skirt, bow tie, what's the big difference? That was part of my freedom. That was part of my creative expression. That was part of saying, this is who I am, even if I don't see it in my company. And I was starting to help, you know, more individuals be more of themselves and be able to tap in, lead ERGs, do all of that great stuff because I started to become more of who I am. So did I have to go through stress? Did I have to go through challenge? Yes, I did. <laughs> but because I had a, you know, idea of where I wanted to go, that's when you have to deploy resilience. And that's what we want to share with you. Okay. Now, number two, I want to introduce the second idea for you. Now we're going to get it a little bit to the science. Our capacity for dealing with change and stress is inherently compromised. It's already at a default inherently compromised. And you're probably wondering what is inherently compromised. Okay. Now for us, we are 
if you invite the idea in multidimensional beings, okay? We're physical, we have a physical, you know, this physical vessel here where we have emotions. So we either, you know, orient ourselves to either negative or positive emotions. We, that's where we get into the feelings. Mental, what is our mental acuity? How can we focus? How can we be conscious of self? And then also our spiritual, you know, our spiritual is, is beyond a religious construct is, more, construct is more expansive to the thought of what is my why? What are my values? What are my company's values? What is my mission? Spiritual is actually where resilience lives. Now, imagine if we were to flip this pyramid upside down, when we anchor ourselves to our values, our purpose and our why, that's when everything else is built upon that. Okay. Now, so we'll get into a little bit of a neuroscience. So if any of us are familiar with, you know, neuroscience, emotional intelligence, we'll be very kind of familiar with some of these terms and how they impact us. But I just want to take us to the, to the mental space. We'll cover the mental and emotional. Now, how does, brain, how does stress impact the brain? The, the central system that helps us with our human behavior. Now we have what we call like our prefrontal cortex. I want everyone to go ahead and take your hand, put it on your head if you're able to, if you're able to. Okay, if you have your hand, what you're holding there is your prefrontal cortex. It helps you with your rational thinking. It helps you make decisions in your day. Okay, I got to send this report. Well, I have to do this for my, you know, community or children, whatever that may be. You're deciphering, you're making decisions all throughout the day. Okay, you could go ahead and put your hand down there. Now, um, that is the prefrontal cortex, our neocortex. Then we also have a, basically a brain detector that kind of is always on looking for threats, and that is our amygdala. Now, amygdala was helpful back in the day when we were hunters and gatherers because we didn't have the Channel 9 news saying, everyone, wear your mask tonight. There are tigers and bears out on the streets, and we need you to be safe. No, we had to navigate the world by, okay, is that a leaf that fell, or is that something to attack me or my tribe, whatever that looks like for us. So the amygdala is always constantly looking for stressors, challenges. Now, when the amygdala is activated, that's when we go into fight, flight, or freeze. We, we, can, we constrict, okay, hey, what do I do? That blood leaves your brain, goes to your extremities because it's trying to push you to leave, leave from wherever your situation is at. It sends cortisol, a stress hormone throughout your body. And now it impacts your autonomic nervous system. So a lot of that heart palpitation, the sweaty palms, the things that we're feeling. And that amygdala, guess what? Does not know if it's a real or perceived threat. It doesn't know if that's a, man, that's a call from your manager or that is you are just being chased by, chased by a tiger. It doesn't know the difference. Okay, that, what, what that person said as a microaggression, that triggered me. Me being a transgender person, going through my organization and having to leave one business area and go to another business area, how do I navigate that? Me being a minority in my Zoom call, I may feel a sense of anxiety. And when we're continuously experiencing that, we get or experience a psychological and physiological, you know, exp uh, expressions of those, okay? So that's a little bit of how the brain is impacted on stress. And guess what? It's happening all the time. We have anywhere from 60 to 70,000 thoughts a, a, a day. <laughs> it's happening. This filter, this perception filter is happening behind the scenes. Now, that is the mental capacity. When we dip into a little bit of the emotional, okay, this, this actually impacts us as well. I want you to look at this as different rooms. Okay, we have four different four different rooms. So, like in our homes, we have our bedroom, we have our kitchen. Um, you know, we have you know maybe whatever room, our backyard. Some of us may want to be in our bedroom all the time, but we can't. We gotta <laughs> we gotta interact. We gotta we gotta socialize and do all this good stuff. But I want to take you to the first room, the performance room. This is when you are ideally your best. You are showing up as who you needed to be, who you need to be. You're feeling connected. This is where creativity happens. This is when you are within your team and you're saying, hey, I have this great idea. This is a lot of where that diverse and inclusion thoughts that we want to see in our companies and even in our personal lives, this is where this is at. This is a, a sense of optimism. This is like, in essence, Caleb, you being your best self. All right, so we have performance. Then we have survival. 
So uh, many of us talked about survival. We're in survival mode. And that's the premise of this content is to how do we go from I'm always surviving to how do I thrive now? How do I thrive? A lot of that is anger, you know, defensive, anxious, judgmental. So when we get into a space and someone misgenders us, uh, you know, call us by, you know, our wrong pronouns or, you know, questions our, you know, our trans transgender transition or what's, you know, if we're gender fluid, gender queer, what spectrum and, and all of these different things, we can retreat into survival mode. When we're in it, and on top of that, when we're experiencing life stressors, then we get into a space of burnout. Burnout is where we experience depression, anxiety, and worry. And we as individuals have to be careful with this because something that may turn out, in this sense, depression, sometimes you can have a seasonal where there's like within two weeks, but anything that gets a little bit longer than that, we just have to just be mindful and make sure that we're getting the proper resources, reaching out to therapy and counseling for this because that's burnout. What happens with burnout is when we're jumping from performance and then back to survival. When I'm coming to work and I feel like, hey, I have to code switch or I have to put on a mask. This is who I am. But personally, I may not be out to my family and family members. I may be separated from my family members because of how they may feel about me. When we're, where we're doing that ping pong back and forth, guess where we land at? Burnout. When we're tired of fighting, 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 fighting when, in, as an HRBP, trying to do policy change, trying to do these different things, we experience burnout. The way that we now kind of help with that is through a space of recovery. Now, recovery is where we feel centered, we feel present, we feel like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm here right now. I feel a sense of calm. And there's practices, there's tools, there's strategies that we need to deploy in order to feel a sense of recovery. But if we don't get that recovery, guess we're, we're just gonna be all over the place in each different room. So my message here is not to say that, hey, we wanna be the toxic pos pos um, pos um, positivity of, you know what, I'm feeling good when you're really not. <laughs> That's why it's so important that we have these support communities because sometimes it's not about, oh, how are you doing? No, really, how are you doing? Are you okay? okay? And how can we have that sense of vulnerability? And it's not to say that you can't be angry. We're taught a lot of time, no, you, you should not repress your feelings as your identity. You shouldn't be angry that you are a person of disability, but you are not making the organization most accessible for me. You can have a sense of anger for that. You can have a sense of frustration for that. But the question that you want to ask yourself is, what room do I live in? And I would love for you in, 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 your, in your journaling time, what room for the past, let's say maybe six maybe even throughout the pandemic or six months, what room have I been spending most of my time in? Okay. So when we are experiencing stress, this is how it impacts our emotions. So now I want you, everyone to get out their notebook. We're gonna take about a minute. When you are presented with stress, what is a story that you tell yourself? Whether it's negative or positive. When you are presented with stress, what is the story you tell yourself? Um, and you know, I feel this is a, a you know a trusting group. If you feel apt to, you can go ahead and put it in the chat. I know for me, when I'm dealing with stress, I'm like, can you really do this? You know, I'm, I don't I don't think I can do this. Or in my in my meetings, being as a black queer woman, I don't feel seen. Is that true? So let me go to the chat here. It says, uh, a couple people say, I'll, fi I'll figure it out. Make it an opportunity. It's up to me to fix this. I love this, this too shall pass. I could take up space here, okay? So let's lean into that positive side. Imposter syndrome, and it will never end. I know there was another facilitator that did something on imposter syndrome. Great, um, great um, webinar, I need to check that out. Um, when I'm dealing with stress, a lot of times I get motivated knowing that the uh, stressful situations will help push through. So we have a narrative and it's important that we listen to our narrative because we are using, our, we're gonna use our public voice in a minute, but we have a private voice, something that goes on up here. <laughs> and it's an inner critic and what we'll consider an inner coach. 
So that inner critic, when you're experiencing that stress, that amygdala comes up, it says, it's, it's fear. It wants to keep you safe. It says, you know what? You, you know, you as your identity, you as who you are, we got to get safe. Okay, we got to retreat. But that doesn't really help when we kind of retreat is when we lean into that inner, inner coach and says, you know what? Let me take up space here. Let me go to out and equal, learn what I need to learn so that I could take it back to my organization so we can really make change. So we want to make sure that when we are stressing or when we're presented with stress, we take the moment to say, what is the story here? Let me be honest. What is the story that I'm telling myself? And then that's when you're able to move from that space. So when we have the negative impacts of our, you know, our mind and our brain, we're experiencing that stress, we're having those emotions and we've now created this story, guess where we go? To coping. And we have unhealthy and healthy ways that we can cope. Unhealthy ways, it kind of derails our, you know, our health. Healthy ways allows us to build a capacity for resilience. Just even um, a short stat here with even minority stress. So those are just basically individuals that may be within the organization or personally in our personal spaces that may be um, considered a minority to the majority group. And when they're feeling that angst, feeling that stress, that's when we lead to anxiety disorders, substance abuse, um, then most of our cis cisgender um, counterparts. Redefining mental health support. This is one of the reasons that inspired me to go into the mental health space because you know, when we're looking for a therapist, we're looking for a counselor, we really have to lean in because there's, it's very much, when we look at the therapy, therapy world, it's very much white male centric in philosophies and modalities, okay? And it is now within, even in, within this generation that we're saying, okay, we need to be more culturally competent. It wasn't until what, around the 1950s that we're being, LGBTQ was taking out of, um, you know, the, the therapy uh, modalities as a dis-ease or illness. We still have a ways to go. And some of us may have our internal or external challenges and may be reluctant to help, but to press in and say, I'm going to find, I need to find a counselor or a therapist that is not only welcoming, I accept LGBTQ clients, but is affirming, that affirms who, who you are and all of who you are. Now, I know the first two sounded a little bit kind of, okay, where's the hope at? <laughs> where's, 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 the, where's the hope? Now, this third idea is resilience allows us to grow through stress. Okay. Resilience is a positive thing. It's a, I like to look at it, stress is a call to a life challenge while resilience is the prescription. It may not feel good, but it's going to help us grow through stress. We're actually going to get an opportunity to do that right now. Uh, we're going to have what we call like a breakthrough activity. Why we call it breakthrough is because this is when we have conversations, we're able to say, okay, you know what? I'm not alone. So we want to step into the space of vulnerability, that brave space, share a stress stressful time in your life where you've activated resilience. What did you learn? What did it prepare you for? So back to the story that I had earlier, that's when I had to activate resilience. What did I learn? Be yourself in every room of your life. What did it prepare me for? To do work like this, where I'm able to lead other LGBTQ individuals, okay? So th those are things, and it could be, you know, maybe your own, if it's, it doesn't have to be, it could be personally related, professionally um, related. Um, when we go into this, don't feel pressured that you have to share. If there's a volunteer, maybe one or two volunteers, that want to share. We're going to be in our rooms for about, about seven minutes. And then we're going to come back and then maybe just discuss what were the insights. Okay. So just give me a thumbs up team if that sounds fair. All right. And I'm going to set us up here. So I'm trying to put us in groups of three. All right. So this ride can get a little bumpy. So put your seat belts on. I'm going to send you off in about three, two, and one.
hey team, if you're still with us, I know it takes maybe about a, it was a large group, so it may take us a little bit of time to get to our groups. So Haley, I, I got you. I'm gonna get you over. Hey, Olga, I don't know if you're pretty much in limbo right now. Um, if you want to come off of mute, I could try to send you to a room here. Hey, Robin, I'm going to get you into a room. I'm sorry, are they doing breakout? Yeah, oh, I'm coming from a from the uh, the other um, seminar that was going on this morning. So that's okay. I, I don't need to interrupt them. No, are you're they going fine. to be coming back for a closing. <laughs> Yeah, so we're in the room for maybe about six minutes. So you're totally fine. It looks like everyone just kind of jumped into the room. Um, we're just answering the question, share a stressful time in your life where you activated resilience. Um, if you're able to um, see my screen there. I am, yes, thank you. Okay, so let me see. If I don't know, Mark and Roy, if you're in limbo, if you're not, we could just make this a room right here. So let me, if you want to take yourself off of mute, let me know if you've been, you know, was able to get to a room. If not, it could, we, could, we could just stay right here. Uh, I'm fine staying here. Okay. Okay. And Roy, you're okay with that as well? Yes, I'm. I'm okay with that as well. Okay. All right. And I gave the team, if maybe one or two volunteers want to go, don't feel pressured in any way that you have to tell, you know, share your story. But um, yeah, team, if you want to go ahead and share where you've had to activate resilience in your life. Well, gosh, is anybody talking about anything other than COVID? <laughs> no, I would say when I facilitate, nope, <laughs> probably not. Yeah, I mean, Well, I mean, stress in everything, in work, in private life, in relationships. The, the last 18 months have been just incredibly stressful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, 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 been, it's, been, it's been hard, you know, challenging. And Robin, if you don't mind sharing, what has been probably uh, one of the, more the, the, the challenges for you? Um, well, um, I would say actually work has been okay. They sent me to work from home. I work from home. That hasn't changed a whole lot. Um, for me, it was more of the my my personal life. Okay. I'm a freelance classical musician, and everything stopped. Everything. Um, yeah. And uh, I mean, I've been playing since I was 11, and to not have that, that was that been. Um, that was my emotional outlet, right? Mm -hmm. My work was my thinking, my music was my feeling. And that's, that's, yeah. I mean, I always wondered what it would be like not to have music in my life. Yeah. And um, now I know, I don't particularly care for it. Thank you for sharing that, Robin. And we're, we're going to get into that a little bit later because some of these pieces that when we're experiencing stress, like for you, that's music. We have this, you know, this kind of outlet. Um, anyone else? We have about two and a half minutes that you've gone through a stressful time and where you've had to activate resilience. Um, I'll go. Sure. So, about five years ago, <clears throat> my son came out um, as transgender. And prior to that, um, 
because he was str struggling with mental health and the coming out adjustment and trying to figure out exactly um, who he was. Um, he was actually hospitalized twice for um, suicide. And as a single mom, um, trying to figure out how to keep your son alive, it's extremely stressful. Um, mm -hmm. There's not even a word to describe it. And you have to be resilient through that and be their strength. And I learned that there's power in living your truth. Mm -hmm. And when he came out, it was a hard realize, realization um, because you have to grieve who he was prior to that in order to allow him to be rebirthed into his new being. Um, I knew that we would make it through together because of what we had gone for, gone through prior with his mental health. Thank you so much, Stephanie. And we hold space for that um, as, a, as a group because um, it's not easy, you know, um, when as a, as, a, as a parent and your child is navigating life and then with the mental health, the well-being, you know, on top of that, um, but you know, at least you were able to anchor yourself that this is something that we're going to be able to get through. Um, so thank you for thank you for sharing that team. So these are the things. <clears throat> I'm, I've closed the rooms now. Uh, the team is going to come back in about another minute here. But um, even if you didn't share, I highly encourage to take a picture of this slide. You'll have a slide deck after this after the session. But um, to really journal around this. You know, I know that we've been here, you know, with for a week, but really, really journal around this, this question. Okay. So um, thank you for everyone that um, spoke and for those that um, of us that, you know, spoke silently to ourselves on this, on this reflection question. So we should have the team back in a little bit here. coming from virtual space. But feel free to, you know, turn on your camera, wave. This is our way of having human contact and interaction. Smile. If you, if you, if you, if, if you like, a lot of oxytocin goes around. We need it. <laughs> we need it. We need it. We need it. All right. I think we're almost there. But as we wait for the group, would anybody um, mind coming off a of mute? Not to share the, the, the details, but what did you learn um, in your sharing? Would anybody be brave to share with us? Yeah, I got you. Yeah, um, go the reality is that we all experience different situations and um, a lot of them are gonna have some similarities, especially in the gender expansive world and the LGBT plus world. And, we all rely on some so other funny. people for support, whether it's the people that we're actually trying to get help from or those that help us get help because we don't realize that we deserve to have it. Yes, thank you for that, Bobby. And that was just such a raw and vulnerable response because that's one of the reasons that we're here. Sometimes we think that we're, we're coming to out and equal because we wanna take stuff back to our organizations. The truth is we're coming here for us. <laughs> some, some of that is for, for, for home, for home base. So um, I'm getting a little bit of feedback there. Uh, but team, you know, once again, thank you for um, stepping into a space of bravery to address this question. Um, like I was telling our small private group, feel free to take a, a picture of this slide. Um, this will also be available to you because I really would love if, you know, encourage you to journal around this question because what ends up happening um, when we're experiencing stress and how our mind and our, how our mind works, it doesn't necessarily know, you know what, hey, I'm going through this stress necessarily because of my, my LGBTQ plus identity. That is sometimes rooted in truth. If we have had past trauma or experiences and it may be rooted in a sense of fact, but it's a story now that we've you know, curated and held in our subconscious. When we go through stress, all the mind knows is I'm experiencing stress and we retreat to, okay, this is what I experienced before. You know, personally, this is how my parent treated me, or this is what I experienced, but whatever that looks like, and now we're bringing, we're bringing it to the workplace. So what we're, what we're doing, these may, the stories that you may have been sharing is unrelated. 
It may, some of us, it may have been uh, equated to our identity. It may have been, we gone through an illness. It may have been gone through a different situation, but we want to anchor ourselves to what was the feeling? What did I, what did I experience that I can't give language to? That's what I want to pull on to in order to move forward. Does that make sense? So when you go back to your workplaces and you are trying to make enforce change, we've been in a bubble or ecosystem for about a week. Now, when we go back into our workplace, they're like, hey, 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 I, I, I know we, we, we sent you there. <laughs> we appreciate it. Uh, but we got our own agenda. It's, it's going into third and fourth quarter. We're going to have to push your agenda back. I see, I see the head nods. Okay, so we have to understand this is where we're going to have to be resilient. Now, when we grow through stress on our time continuum, as we mature through our life and we have these different experiences, you have a current capacity now of how you deal with stress. Right? Given the pandemic, we have a new capacity of how we deal with stress, things that we didn't know that we can even handle. Some of us may have had a breaking point. I know for sure I had a breaking point. Anyone has had a breaking, like, okay, I don't know how much this pandemic better end soon because <laughs> I don't know how much more long I could take. The way that we get to our desired capacity is that we have to invite ourselves to stress. So yes, stress has gotten a bad rap, a negative connotation. It's bad, it's anxiety, it's gonna cause you this. But how can we say, you know what? That stress, if I didn't experience X, I wouldn't be the person that I am today. If I didn't experience this, I wouldn't be able to be a mentor to a child that's coming out. I wouldn't be able to go through the experiences I have and now be a force for change at my organization. Does that make sense? So even though that we've gone, we have, we're all from all walks of life and we've experienced different challenges, experiences, maybe even trauma or different things, how can we look at that situation and say, you know what, that stress, that challenging time, that maybe it caused some pain, it actually positioned me to where I need to be. I'm right where I need to be, okay? And the key concepts that is going to help you is actually going through, I love to call it R, having a sense of awareness. That's what we were doing earlier. We was understand, getting an understanding how is stress impacting me physiologically and psychologically. We don't think about that. We just think about the current situation, what I'm going through, what I need to do to be who I am or get things done. But how is that stress? How is the stress of my partner or the disassociation with my family or the hoops that I have to jump through at my organization? How is that impacting me? And if we continue to have stress, over stress, over stress, over stress, guess what happens? We tend to overtrain. And what happens when we overtrain? We hurt ourselves. And what happens when we undertrain? When we say, you know what, I'm just gonna throw in a towel. I'm not, I'm not gonna lead the ERG anymore. HRBPs could do what they wanna do. Procurement could do what they want. I don't care. <laughs> what happens, we're not being effective. So we have to find that balance. We have to find that balance of how do we expose ourselves to stress? And stress is not the enemy, it's actually the catalyst for growth. How do we expose ourselves, but then we have recovery? We need to have that sense of balance. So let's, let's for the, the last few minutes we have here, have resilient recovery. So physical resilience, I'm not necessarily teaching you anything new. I'm not, don't be surprised if you're like, oh, I do that already. But the reinforcement that we need to, you know, get a, you know, reacquainted with it. Rest and movement. Why rest, especially given in this pandemic, a lot of the things that we're going through, rest helps us reset our hormonal balances. It helps us with our creativity. So all the stuff that you're learning this week, when you get good rest, then you're able to really activate that. You're really able to come up, be a really a problem solver. It helps you with when we're being inundated with content on the news, when we're seeing, you know, the bills not going through, things are all these different things experienced in our community our physiological system needs a break. We sometimes take care, better care of our phones than we take care of, than we take, than we take care of ourselves. So we wanna be able to have rest. When we're able to rest, then we're able to serve more, serve ourselves and serve our communities. So we wanna do exercise, whatever that looks like for you, whatever makes your body feels of joy. Um, of course, nutrition and hydration, eat foods that's worthy of your body body. 
I know many of us mention experiencing stress, mental, dis, you know, mental, um, you know, disabilities or, um, you know, things that we may experience. We have to be careful of what we put in our mouth. You know, we have help from one area, but how do we have, you know, food and water and things that's going to support us? And actually how we use it as a sense of a privilege. We know in our world that we're experiencing food insecurity. How do we say, okay, you know what, I'm going to eat the appropriate foods that's going to actually help me. And one that we don't talk a lot about when it comes down to physio physical uh, resilience is having the bodily autonomy to say, I'm going to love myself and honor myself as a queer person the way that I am. Whatever transition, whatever journey that looks like expressing kindness to who I am. Okay, so let's actually move together. So we can stand up, maybe, you know, feel free to turn your cameras on. We're just going to do some movement. Okay, so when we're at it, when we're at our work desk, maybe when we're home personally, we just kind of want to roll our shoulders back. I like to call this the Tina Turner. Y'all too, too young for that. You don't know that. That's before your time. Okay. <laughs> we want to take our right leg and we want to stretch if we're able to. If not, if we are seated, we just want to maybe lean a little bit, lean our hands out to the side. Okay. Okay. We want to lean a little bit to the other side. Okay. And for those that person, you know, we have our folks here that has a person with a disability. Um, and if we have able to move our hands, we just want to move our fingers and just kind of Go in rotation, all right? Awesome, awesome. So these are the things that when we're feeling stressed on a Zoom call, we wanna give ourselves permission to just say, okay, I'm gonna go on mute and I'm gonna go over here and I need to kind of reset myself. Does that help? Give me a thumbs up if it does. Put in the chat if it does. Awesome team. All right, second one, um, emotional resilience. Having the ability or leaning into the ability, it's okay not to be okay. This is something unique that we experience in the LGBTQ community is that we've been taught a lot or conditioned to repress your emotions. And that's what we see that on the other side, but it's okay not to be okay. It's okay to cry. It's okay that you may be a cisgender man, but you've been told or taught, hey, men do not cry. Or this is the way that you're supposed to foster your emotions. It's okay not to be okay. Emotions are signals for us. We talked about that earlier. Give yourself, especially within our community, um, move from permission to notice. A lot of the times we're trying to ask people, is it okay for me to feel this way? But when we're talking to our leaders, even if you're a leader on this call or even our family members and say, hey, when you said this as a microaggression, or when you did this, you know, when you're not respecting who I am and how I'm showing up, this makes me feel like that. You're putting them on notice. You're making change. And then just kind of balance yourself, protect your peace. When it comes down to the news and social media and all these different things going on, sometimes you just need to unplug <laughs> and just kind of say, I, I need, like Carrie, you have a beautiful background. Sometimes we just need to get in nature, whatever that looks like. Some of us like to play music, whatever that looks like for us, you need to create boundaries for yourself, healthy boundaries, okay? So I'd love for us, if you get out, grab your notebooks and, um, uh, you know, beyond our identity, I want us to anchor to words that's going to help us when we're experiencing a stressful time. So we have 30 seconds each. The first statement, I am, and fill in the blank. I am brave. I am courageous. I am strong. What is that for you? Let's take, let's take 20 seconds. What is that for you? I love it. We're getting in the, giving it even in the chat. I am enough. I am powerful. I'm believing gratitude. I'm strong. Okay. Let's move to the next statement. I believe. What do you believe in? I believe in change. I believe in hope. I believe what I'm doing is going to help me. What is that? Let's take, take 15 seconds. Write down. What is that for you? I believe. Love it, team. Love it. I believe in change. I believe in positive difference. And then the last one, um, if you haven't caught it, um, any Brene Brown fan, fans here, she's a lot about you know, vulnerability and shame. <clears throat> and her call to curse special, um, she shares this story of how she's you know, having this conversation with this woman. And the woman says, 
you would never know the magnitude of my loss until you're grateful for what you have. Let that sit for a moment. What are you grateful for? What has this pandemic highlighted for you to be grateful for? So let's take about, you know, same way, 15 seconds. What are you grateful for? Awesome team, I'm grateful for the music, Aaliyah's music finally being released, yes, for all Aaliyah's fans out there. I'm grateful for my life until now. I'm grateful for my family, okay? These are things that we have to anchor ourselves to, okay? So if you've written that, this down in your notebook, what I'd love you to do is take that piece of paper out, put it by your computer desk. So when you are putting your computer desk, put it somewhere in your bathroom mirror. So when you are dealing with stress, with your identity, with work, you can say, I am brave. I can get through this. I can work through that. That's what resilience is all about. Okay. Um, mental resilience will highlight a couple of, couple of these. Meditation and breathing or mindfulness, whatever that looks like for us. Some, may, some of us may not be all into the sitting for 10 or 15, but can you walk? If you're able to, can you just can you can you look outside and just what is that what is that meditation what is that breathing and mindfulness that visualization? So you really bring in that that change or that belief of change that you want to have. How can you how can you make that happen? And in community and counseling, I can't further stress of we are here as a group. As a community, out in equal, all these years, some of us come back just, oh man, I gotta see my, I gotta see my friend, I gotta see what they're doing at their organization. We gotta tap into community. This is a community. How are you making local communities, virtual communities, and maybe counseling? You know, we many of our organizations offer EAP. They give sometimes five or six free sessions. How can you tap into that? How can you say, hey, the advisor list that you have is not having a lot of affirming LGBTQ um, counselors. Make that request to your HRBPs. I need that. We need that. Okay. But really use those resources that's going to be able to help you. Let's actually take 30 seconds to breathe. I think, given the nature of what we've seen, well, a lot of times we see, especially within our Black Lives Matter, okay, the whole essence of can we breathe or we feel that we cannot because of the systemic oppression, oppression the racism that's going on. But we have privilege, all of us do, regardless of color, race, or creed. We have this privilege right here, right now. How can we breathe? So let's take about 30 seconds. If you feel safe to do so, close your eyes. I want you to inhale and exhale. I would love for you to bring your hand, left hand if able to, to your heart. Your right hand to your stomach and breathe, take an inhale and exhale. Breathe in your I am, exhale. Breathe in your I believe, exhale. Breathe in what you're grateful for and exhale. Be, breathe in that you are here with us. We are here together right now. Take one cleansing breath and exhale. So team, that's things that we want to do. We want to make sure that we are breathing. That helps reset our prefrontal cortex. It has a lot of science behind it, but it's just good for us to be present. And then lastly, as we wrap up here, um, spiritual resilience. So this is, is, is more expansive than a religious construct, but what is a force that's greater than yourself? What is a grounding practice that's gonna help you be the essence of who you are? How do you deploy that on a daily, weekly? What does that look like for you? And something that we've done right now, gratitude and joy. If you don't get anything else out of this entire session, if you're able to say, let me, let me seek the moments of gratitude, let me seek the moments of joy. Let me connect back with my purpose or go on a discovery process of my purpose. That in itself is going to help you get through more resilient times. So we won't necessarily do this here. I set this up for us for half homework. I'm going to put my email in the chat because I love to hear how your responses to these questions. So feel free to take a picture of this. Um, after the session, I'm going to um, put the slide deck up. But who and what matters most to you? 
what makes your life worth living. Okay, even if that's hard and challenging for us to ask. Some of us are on a moment to moment basis. And how will you serve with your power and your privilege? Okay. Um, I know we are um, coming up here on time. Um, I have this last slide that talks about resilient allyship. So if you don't have a hard stop, um, we'll love for, you know, uh, take a minute to go through this. Um, but as we talk about, some of us are, you know, part of the, within the community. Um, and even if you're allyship, you are within the community as well. But when you're looking to be a better ally, it's start with your why. Start with why you want to be an ally. Start with why you want to be an advocate. That's going to keep you, help you. Um, letting other people know that you're looking to be an advocate. That helps you with accountability. And then two, having heart-centered conversations. I can't tell you, nor anyone on this call could tell you when racism is going to end, when transphobia, homophobia, queerphobia is going to end, when we're going to experience life challenges. But if we you know, kind of have the balance from our head to our heart and really have those heart-centered conversations as leaders, as peers, that's when we're able to make the change. And then also be a change maker. If we know on this call that we're able to use our power and privilege, how can we use our power and privilege in rooms that individuals are not a part of? How can we do that? Even if it feels uncomfortable, breathe and think about your spiritual resilience. Okay, so team, um, as just, you know, as you go into your weekend, what I love for you to think about is where you need to really tap into. Is that physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual? What, what dimension do you need to tap into that's going to help you be more resilient? So I have a 21-day challenge. Um, this will be part of the slide deck. I would love to hear what that what, what your challenge is. What I will I will work out three times a week. I will, you know, use my power and privilege so that I can, you know, be more resilient. What is that for you? And um, I like to leave us with this quote: "It's not our differences that divide us; it is our inability to recognize and accept and celebrate those differences." By Audre Lorde. So as we, you know, been soaked up in the goodness of this whole week, how do we go out, continue in our, in our own personal worlds and our workplaces and continue to celebrate our differences, not tolerate, have people tolerate us, but how do we celebrate? So I wanna thank you all for your energy. I know it was, you know, we got some goodness here. Hopefully you've taken at least one thing out of this experience together and you, you saw some of your friends here. I'm deeply grateful for you all. I'm deeply grateful for Aaron and LND and Outmequal, the team, um, for inviting me to this space so that we can kind of we could get to the space of resilience. So leaving here is not about surviving. How do I thrive? I am thriving. So team, um, love you all, sending you all in love and peace um, throughout the week. Um, and enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Um, connect with me. I'm on LinkedIn. Feel free to send me an email. I love to support you and support your teams um, if needed. And uh, feedback, let us know how this experience was for you. Um, feedback is a gift. Awesome. All right, so I see a lot of thank yous. Thank you all. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, team, till next time. Thank you, this was really awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. Such a great experience. My favorite session. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Loved it. I loved it. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Thanks a million. Thank you. Are you on Instagram? Yes, I'm on Instagram. It is um, queer on purpose. Um, put it Thank in the that's um, where I help with um, individuals within the community with religious um, trauma in that capacity. But thank you all. Um, Marvelous. I'll, I'll be here for the next few minutes. So if you all had questions or anything, I'm here. This was really great. Thank you so much, Kayla. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks, Coach K. Appreciate it. Thank you. Anytime. Thanks. Bye-bye. I'll be in touch. Yes, yes. Thank you, team. Sure, um, LinkedIn link. Uh, Thank that. you. You're welcome. You're welcome. I appreciate what you said. Thank you so much. Thank you all. I appreciate you all. Annie.
Yes, we're, we're queer on purpose. We're created with a purpose. Um, so yes. Thank you all. Have a great rest of your summit. Awesome, thank you, um, Anna Alicia. It's been a joy, it's been a pleasure. What was your uh, Instagram again? Sure, my Instagram is um, queer, queer on purpose. Queer, okay, thank you. You're welcome. I have some church trauma too, so that's relevant to my interests. <laughs> thank you, Autumn, and, and I'm glad to serve you know you and others in that way because it, it does. We got to you know for those of us that want to uh, bring those intersectionalities together and not feel a sense of separatism with them. Um, you know, we, we, we can have that experience as well.